Hi, welcome back to the series on attention mechanisms. In a previous video, we ended with a schematic that explains how self-attention works. What I would like to do now is review that schematic and explain how we can extend it to multi-head attention. So again, we're gonna start with our collection of word embeddings, V1 all the way up to Vn. And just for emphasis, one such word embedding that we have that represents an array of numbers. And next what we did is we said, well, we can take those word embeddings and we can pass them through three linear layers. So that's our first linear layer, our second linear layer, and our third. And what we did in the previous video is we gave a name to each of these layers. We said, well, this is the keys layer. We also had one for queries and another one for values. And there was an analogy with databases, but for all intents and purposes, these are just three linear layers without a bias term. And then the keys and queries got combined. And what came out of here were these scores. So for every query and for every key, we, we had one of these scores. And those were useful, but we wanted them normalized first. And what came out of here were weights that were good for reweighing. Finally, we would take these weights and we would take these normalized weights and multiply them together with the values such that what would come out was this representation of the same shape, but the hope was that these vectors would have more context. And we also argued that there's a benefit of having these separate linear layers because this is something that we could learn. This was something where if we had a gradient signal, we would have weights that would be able to learn from data and hopefully give us a attention mechanism well suited for a task that we had in mind. But there is a downside to this and that downside might inspire us to make an improvement. So let's take the sentence, I gave my dog, Charlie, some food. Now let us zoom in on this word here, gave. Where should attention go? Well, first of all, I think I can argue that the word I should have some attention because who is doing the giving? Well, I am. Uh, that's, that's in the sentence. And who am I giving it to? Well, Charlie. And what am I giving? Well, food. And this is a somewhat grammatical argument, but you could argue that these are all things that should be in relationship at least. So now here's the question for our current approach. Do we have enough attention? And sure, we've got our layer for the query, for the keys and for the values, but Looking at this simple sentence, it seems that we have to have our attention split up on many different things. So it is therefore plausible that maybe we should have multiple attention mechanisms, where this is attention mechanism one, this is attention mechanism two, and this is attention mechanism three. And again, how these attention mechanisms are learned and trained that will depend heavily on the task that we give this attention mechanism but I hope it's at least plausible that we would do well in having more than just one attention mechanism. By having multiple ones, we might make it easier for ourselves. We don't have to oversaturate one single attention mechanism because we spread the cognitive load on multiple ones. So let's go back to the neural diagram and let's just add some extra attention mechanisms. So I'm gonna go and make some adjustments. But the main adjustment that I will do is I will add steps that perform in parallel. And the main thing that I'm gonna parallelize is this linear block that I've drawn above. Now the way that you should read this is that these are three separate linear layers that will operate in parallel. They don't share weights, so every single linear layer is training on its own. But the consequence of this is that instead of having one thing coming out over here, that we have, in essence, three outputs in this case. So I'm now going to replace the linear blocks I've got over here, and then we'll discuss all the changes that happen in the rest of the network. 
So I've now got my stack of linear layers here. And let's say that these are still the layers for the keys, these for the queries, and these for the values. Then I'm still going to take the output from the keys and from the queries and multiply them together here. And the consequence of this is that the result that we have in the middle here is now different. We still have our intermediate scores just like before, but we're going to have multiple of them. Let's say that this is the first one. Well, then that one will correspond as if this one and this one and this one just got multiplied together. And the one at the end here, that's going to correspond with the last one that we had here. And I'm calling this H. I don't know how many of these layers we might stack on top of each other, so I'll just call it H for now. But the idea is that we're going to just have more of them here. And we're going to have a very similar thing happen here. These will be the normalized weights. And again, we're going to have something corresponding to the first set of linear layers all the way up until the last one. And then as a final consequence, I hope it's no surprise that we also will have multiple outputs because of this. Now, having multiple outputs can be a downside. There's something to be said that you want the shape of the input to also be the shape of the output. That way you can click these layers together. So in this situation, we're gonna add one extra step. We're gonna concatenate all these results, pass that through a single dense layer, and that way we can control the shape of the output. And I'll put a star here to indicate that this is the final output of this model. Now we've made a lot of changes, but the main changes we've made are happening here. We are calculating multiple keys, multiple queries, and multiple values layers. And that is giving us multiple outputs over here, which we are combining back again in a single one over here. But there's a reason why I chose to go for this name H that you see over here. And again, I hope you appreciate the correspondence. The, the H that you see here corresponds all the way through. And the first number that you see here also corresponds all the way through. And H in this case stands for head. There are multiple heads of attention, which also give us multiple outputs here. And that is coincidentally also why this is called multi head attention. So I hope this overview gives you a little bit of intuition. To wrap up this video, I'd like to show you an interactive visualization of a multi-head attention mechanism, and then also show you how it relates to the block that we've mentioned here. So what you see now are multiple multi-head attention blocks that are stacked on top of each other. And we have inputs at the bottom that go through each multi-headed attention block, block by block. And the schematic that you see on the left-hand side can be visualized by what I've got here on the right. This is the interactive visualization in the Tensor to Tensor Colab notebook. And there's a link in the show notes. What this tool allows me to do is hover over these tokens to see how the attention is spread. I'll be able to select the layer, and I'll also be able to see where the attention of each attention head is going. So let's briefly play with this. So let's hover the cursor over all of these words. And you should be able to see that on the left hand side, every attention header is giving its attention on something different. And there's a lot of attention mechanisms on now, so I'll turn a few off. That's a little bit easier to see. And what I can now also do is change the layer. That is to say, change the attention block that I'm inspecting. 
Now it should be said that the attention mechanism that we are currently looking at is trained for a translation task. So if you were to train this on a natural entity recognition task, the headers are bound to be paying attention to different parts. But the interactive visualization does show how different attention heads are definitely paying attention to different parts. And it turns out that this attention mechanism is really powerful. Attention mechanisms like this have really pushed the state of the art forward. And I hope that this visualization, together with the explanation that I gave you, has been able to give you just enough intuition to understand what's happening here. Now it should be said that this attention mechanism, although it's very powerful, is but a single component of another architecture that's known as a transformer. And I'll discuss that in the next video. And I'll hope you'll stay tuned for that.